This is David Ricardo's difficult theorem, the theory of comparative advantage. Now, what it says is that mutually beneficial trade can still happen when, even when one country can produce both goods at an absolute advantage. Now, in this example, due to different factor conditions in reality, this is more likely a case. One country enjoys absolute advantage in both goods. In particular, this is more common when we compare a developed country like Japan, in this case, with a developing country like the Vietnam. The developed country is more likely to enjoy an AA in both goods because it has more capital, better tech, and more skilled workers. Now, in Adam Smith's time, he may well not have considered this as, at his time, it was when trade was mostly happening between similar countries, such as England and Portugal. While in today's East Asia emerging economies, we are still getting high off the copious opium. Now, Ricardo says that even in such conditions where there is AA in both in one country, mutually beneficial trade can still happen if the countries produce both goods with different relative opportunity costs. Now, here we see that Japan has the AA in both goods. However, Vietnam enjoys the CA in making shoes. While Japan has to sacrifice two microscopes to make one pair of shoes, Vietnam only has to sacrifice half a microscope. Japan, however, has a CA in microscopes. Now let's introduce some trade into our model. Due to trade, Japan specializes in microscopes while Vietnam in shoes. Because this is comparative and not absolute advantage, we cannot consider complete specialization. This is by far the trickiest part. You must get the numbers right or you'll end up disproving centuries of economic thought. Now here, Japan trans transfers three factor units to microscopes, and Vietnam transfers seven factor units from microscopes to shoes. Because Japan enjoys an AA in both goods, it must transfer less factor units for our model to work. Yes, I am aware that this is technically cooking the books to get the results I want, but this is a necessity when Cetrus is not Paribus. Thus, with this diagram, we can show that you making the adjustments, comparative advantage-based specialization, is mutually beneficial to both countries. Now, unlike the law of demand or the law of or absolute advantage, the theory of comparative advantage is not blindingly obvious. This thought experiment can help simplify the reasoning that underscores CA. Now, imagine a lawyer with his fancy law degree and his own practice. He's considering hiring a secretary. Now, the lawyer can type faster and do everything better than the secretary, but it still makes sense to hire the secretary because the lawyer's comparative advantage is in higher order tasks, writing briefs, defending clients, and so on. So to wit, it doesn't matter how efficient you are as a country in absolute terms. It does matter, however, how efficient you are in terms of other goods that you could have been making. Now, in the next lesson, we'll be learning the benefits of trade as well as some of the hazards of completely free trade. We'll be looking at the justification proposed by protectionists and why game theory proves that protectionism inevitably leads to more protectionism.